Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 185th commencement exercises of New York University at Yankee Stadium. Please note, access to the field is strictly prohibited at all times.
On behalf of the entire Yankees organization, I want to welcome the graduates and their families to Yankee Stadium for NYU's 185th commencement exercises. NYU graduates will receive degrees in many academic fields today, but there's one field you've got to stay off of, and that's the playing field. New York always recognizes a winner, and we are proud of all of you. Enjoy your graduation, but remember, enjoy it from your seats and stay off the field. Congratulations to NYU's class of 2017.
behalf of the entire Yankees organization, I want to welcome the graduates and their families to Yankee Stadium for NYU's 185th commencement exercises. NYU graduates will receive degrees in many academic fields today, but there's one field you've got to stay off of, and that's the playing field. New York always recognizes a winner, and we are proud of all of you. Enjoy your graduation, but remember, enjoy it from your seats and stay off the field. Congratulations to NYU's class of 2017.
entire Yankees organization, I want to welcome the graduates and their families to Yankee Stadium for NYU's 185th commencement exercises. NYU graduates will receive degrees in many academic fields today, but there's one field you've got to stay off of, and that's the playing field. New York always recognizes a winner, and we are proud of all of you. Enjoy your graduation, but remember, enjoy it from your seats and stay off the field. Congratulations to NYU's class of 2017.
Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. In a few moments, the New York University faculty will enter the stadium. Please be reminded that access to the field is strictly prohibited at all times. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome members of the New York University faculty.
please welcome members of the please welcome members of the Administrative Management Council, Student Senators Council, and University Committee on Student Life, carrying the university colors and leading the 185th Commencement Platform Party into the stadium. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a hearty welcome to members of the New York University Alumni Association and to members of our 50th anniversary class who join us today to celebrate this year's graduates. Please welcome New York University's 2017 school banner bearers, deans, and class representatives marching in founding order. Woo! College of Arts and Science.
Madison. Tandon School of Engineering. College of Dentistry. Graduate School of Arts and Science. School of Culture, Education, and Human Development.
Stern School of Business. College of Nursing. School of Professional Studies. Robert F. Wagner, Graduate School of Public Service. Silver School of Social Work. Tisch School of the Arts.
Gallatin School of Individualized Study. liberal studies. NYU Abu Dhabi. NYU Shanghai. College of Global Public Health. degree programs represented by the Center for Urban Science and Progress.
Ladies and gentlemen, now entering the stadium are university leadership and honorary degree recipients, led by our Chief Marshal.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Provost of New York University, Catherine E. Fleming. Here now, in the presence of candidates for academic recognition, members of the faculty and administration, alumni, trustees, honored guests, and friends of New York University, the 185th commencement is hereby convened. Please stand for the singing of the national anthem led by Sofia Alvarez, who receives a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree today from the Tisch School of the Arts. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting Ladies and gentlemen, Chair of the Board of Trustees of New York University, William R. Berkeley. Ladies and gentlemen, Chair of the Board of Trustees is a role I've had for not quite two years. I have the honor to welcome all of you, honorees, graduates, parents, family, and friends to these 185th commencement exercises. A longtime member of the NY community and a 1966 graduate of the Stern School, I've had the privilege of attending. I've had the privilege of attending many commencement ceremonies but doing so on second base at Yankee Stadium is a thrill like none other. True to our founder, Albert Gallatin, we have translated we have translated his magnificent vision of a university that is in and of the city to one that is also in and of the world. Our exceptional faculty and students flourish at Washington Square and in our other major centers throughout New York, from Greenwich Village to our health corridor on First Avenue in Manhattan, and now, and now over the river 
to the great borough of Brooklyn. Beyond New York, a true global network of talent and ambition thrive at two other degree-granting campuses in Abu Dhabi and Shanghai. The latter graduating its first class in 10 days' time, as well as, as, well as 11 global academic centers operating on six continents, from Accra to Sydney to Florence, Buenos Aires to Prague to Berlin, Madrid and Tel Aviv and London to Paris, and Washington, D.C. We see our values reflected in those of whom we will soon bestow honorary degrees. Seven extraordinary individuals who've altered the landscape of science, government, education, and the arts, and humanitarian endeavors, and who will follow these impressive individuals onto uncharted paths of inquiry and service to humankind. It is you, the class of 2017. This is your day, made all the more special because you are now forever bound with these exceptional honorees, with your fellow graduates, and more than 470,000 of your fellow alumni in a long and proud tradition of excellence. And so, it is not only our hope, but our firm expectation that your lives will be marked by a commitment to the well-being of others, infused with the intelligence and creativity that have characterized your days among us. As you leave the university, know that you take with us our warmest wishes, congratulations, and welcome to the NYU alumni family. We now present a video tribute to the class of 2017, featuring graduating students from each of our schools and special alumni and friends. I'm graduating from the School of Professional Studies. I'm graduating from the Courant Institute of Mathematical Sciences. I'm graduating from the Tandon School of Engineering. And I'm graduating from NYU Abu Dhabi. I'm graduating from the College of Arts and Science. And I'm graduating from Tisch School of the Arts. I'm graduating from the Silver School of Social Work. And I'm graduating from Gallatin. I'm graduating from the Robert F. Wagner School of Public Service. I'm graduating from the Steinhardt School of Culture, Education, and Human Development. I'm graduating from the College of Global Public Health. And I am graduating from Graduate School of Arts and Science. I'm getting my PhD from the Institute of Fine Arts. And I'm graduating from the NYU Rory Myers College of Nursing. I'm graduating from the Center for Urban Science and Progress. And I'm graduating from the College of Dentistry. I'm graduating from the NYU School of Law. I'm graduating from the Stern School of Business. And I'm graduating from Liberal Studies. And I'm graduating from the School of Medicine. My name is Wang Che. I'm from the Shanghai University in 2017. To be graduating, it feels like ah, amazing. NYU has been one of the best decisions I ever made in my life. Being in a space like this uh, really does cater to a person who is forward thinking, open thinking, and more of a visionary. I became more independent. I learned how to budget my money and time. I have had the most amazing experiences, like a clinical experience where I have been in a courtroom and actually acted as a lawyer. It was very cool, very scary. At NYU, I've learned that there's not just one way of thinking. There's not just one field of study. I'll walk into a class and feel like, you know, this will be fine, it'll be easy. And then week two, I'll be struggling to keep up on readings or struggling to write the essays that I'm probably behind on. The NYU community is deep, 
And just working alongside such incredible scholars and teachers, it really brought out the best in me. We have people of all different backgrounds and all different organizations driven by different goals coming together and building bridges between different communities. The biggest thing that I love about NYU is that it is in the heart of the city. I will miss Washington Square Park the most because you know you can just chill there and then enjoy the sun or the rain. I think the accessibility of everything, you can go around the corner and get food and see a show or go to the movies. I'm not gonna miss how the city smells in the morning. This is the only city that I can walk out of the house at three o'clock in the morning and get a full meal. The opportunities I had at NYU are basically unparalleled. I went to Budapest, NYU Prague, Paris, Shanghai. At NYU London, I got the opportunity to do research at the British Library. NYU have allowed me to travel to Cuba, where I have conducted field research on my dissertation topic. It just gave me a chance to see education through this other lens that I hadn't experienced before. I had the most amazing mentors, and I think that was an amazing opportunity that only you can get at NYU. I loved my instructors at NYU. They just made learning so fun. They are so willing to pass on their knowledge to you. They care about teaching. All I can say is, wow and I'm hard to impress. It was hard, you challenged me, but you know what? I came out better for it. I just feel like I can really do anything and nothing is outside of my reach. Congratulations, graduates. Today is your day. I'm Heather Kennedy, and I'm so proud to serve as president of your NYU Alumni Association. Today, you join nearly half a million NYU alumni around the world and here are just a few of them to share their congratulations with you. Congratulations, graduates. You did it. And now the real adventure begins. So go out into the world and be yourself. Please don't try to be anybody else but you. Congratulations, graduates. You have not been chopped. You have made it. And the brilliant education that you've experienced at New York University is now yours to go forth and share with the world, along with those terrific manners you learned from New York City. Congratulations, graduates. You did it. It's been a few years since I graduated, but I still remember the energy and excitement of being where you are today. Make NYU and New York City proud. So, you know, I live downtown, and I walk my dogs near Washington Square every morning. So on behalf of my dogs and myself, congratulations to the new class of NYU graduates. NYU grads. Congratulations. congratulations. Do great things with your education. Change the world. We'll see you on Mars. I hope many of you understand what an important occasion this is. It's taking with you the things that you've learned at NYU, which I hope are perseverance, good friendships, and most importantly, the ability to think outside the box. Congratulations, all of you students and your parents sitting here today. I've been both at NYU. As a student, I couldn't have been more proud then and today that I earned my degree from this amazing university. And as a parent, I remember sitting at graduation, just like all of you today, watching my child graduate and thinking the same thing. Thank God I don't have to pay for college anymore. And to you students, the door is open for all of you. The future is yours. We're waiting for you. Congratulations. We did it. Congratulations. Congratulations. We did it. Congratulations. Congratulations, class of 2017. We finally did it. Felicidades a la clase de 2017. Congratulations. Congratulations, class of 2017. We did it. Congratulations. 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 We did it. Congratulations, class of 2017. Ladies and gentlemen, those who are about to receive honorary degrees will now be presented to President Andrew D. Hamilton, Lynn P. Brown, Senior Vice President for University Relations and Public Affairs, will call upon distinguished members of the university community to present and escort the honorary degree candidates. Assisting with the investitures will be Provost Catherine E. Fleming. Mr. President, I would like to introduce Cheryl G. Hilton, Dean of the College of Global Public Health, Director of the Global Institute of Public Health, and Professor of Public Health, who will present the candidate for Doctor of Science. Will Trustee Mark Leslie please escort the candidate to the lectern?
Thomas R. Frieden, native New Yorker, one of the world's foremost authorities in public health. You transformed the nation's Center for Disease Control and Prevention with its far-reaching mandate to protect health and safety across the world into an agency firmly rooted in innovation and rapid response. You practice a utilitarian view of medicine, developed at Oberlin College and refined at Columbia University's medical school, finding out what works, implementing these methods, and tracking their effectiveness over time. By data-driven measures, you helped end the Ebola epidemic and launched an initiative and launched an initiative that will prevent half a million heart attacks and strokes. As health, as health commissioner of this city for seven years, you took on entrenched interests to combat an array of scourges, smoking, obesity, and HIV. Hundreds of thousands of New Yorkers and people around the globe owe their better health and indeed their lives to you. Thomas Frieden, proactive and persistent in the struggle to prevent and control disease. Saver of lives, you have proven yourself a brilliant, driven, and courageous first responder for humankind. By virtue of the authority vested in me, I am pleased to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. Mr. President, I would like to introduce Anna Harvey, Interim Dean of the Graduate School of Arts and Science and Professor, Wilf Family Department of Politics, Faculty of Arts and Science, who will present the candidates for Doctor of Humane Letters. Will Trustee Evan Chesler please escort the candidates to the lectern? Gabrielle Giffords, former. <laughs> former three-term member of the U.S. House of Representatives from Arizona, known for your kindness, candor, and grueling work ethic. While in Congress, you championed immigration reform energy independence, and the needs of military veterans and families. Mark Kelly, U.S. Navy combat veteran, former test pilot, and retired NASA astronaut, you commanded. <laughs> 
You commanded Space Shuttle Endeavor's final flight. Beyond these stunning individual achievements, you two share a story of abundant love, indomitable will, and rugged courage in the struggle to recover from devastating injuries inflicted by gun violence. Your selfless decision, taking on vigorous public roles designed to encourage elected officials to enact laws that make our communities safer, was in keeping with careers marked by service and devotion to duty. Gabri Gabrielle Giffords and Mark Kelly, thrown a cruel curve midway through your distinguished careers, forced to abandon professions you excelled at and loved, you took on, without hesitation, the pivotal leadership of one of the most urgent imperatives of our time. By virtue of the authority vested in me, I am pleased to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. I'd like to introduce Pamela Newkirk, Professor of Journalism and Director of Undergraduate Studies, Arthur L. Carter Journalism Institute, Faculty of Arts and Science, who will present the candidate for Doctor of Humane Letters. Will Trustee Sharon Chang please escort the candidate to the lectern? Melissa Victoria Harris Perry. Engaging professor, author, and public speaker, steadfast in the pursuit of social justice, you have said, the best justice work we do comes about when we commit ourselves fully to a cause we're likely to lose. You have taught at top universities, Chicago, Princeton, Tulane, and your alma mater, Wake Forest, where you today occupy the Maya Angelou Presidential Chair, an honor reserved for exceptional professors who embody the teacher-scholar ideal. Your study, Barbershops, Bibles, and BET won praise for helping us learn how ideologies are formed by listening to everyday talk at the grassroots level. And Sister Citizen, your acclaimed examination of negative race and gender images confronting black women exposes the political and emotional costs of these harmful and corrosive stereotypes. Melissa Harris Perry, a foremost public intellectual, lecturing widely in the United States and abroad, an eloquent and progressive voice 
within and far beyond the Academy. You exert a deep and broad impact on the confluence of politics, race, gender, religion and culture. By virtue of the authority vested in me, I am pleased to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters Honoris Causa. Mr. President, I would like to introduce James Canary, Department Chair and Professor of Chemistry, Faculty of Arts and Science, who will present the candidate for Doctor of Science. Will Trustee Jay Stein please accompany the candidate to the lectern? Jean-Marie Pierre Lane, chemist, scientist, professor. Through brilliantly conceived research experiments, you have brought your exceptional mind to bear on unraveling the processes that underlie the evolution of matter towards states of higher complexity. A native of France, where you received your scientific training, you have brought honor to your country and your colleagues at the renowned Université Louis Pasteur in Strasbourg and Collège de France in Paris throughout a half century of stellar scientific achievement. For your seminal studies on the chemical basis of molecular recognition, you shared the 1987 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. And for a lifetime of prolific insight into the mysteries of a new field that you christened supramolecular chemistry and its subsequent paths of inquiry, you have established yourself as one of the world's singularly great scientists. Jean Marie Len, Nobel laureate. Magnificent ambassador for science, you have sharpened our perception of how chemistry permeates every aspect of our lives and propels the evolution of elementary particles into the complex thinking organisms that we are. By virtue of the authority vested in me, I am pleased to confer upon you my dear friend and mentor, the degree of Doctor of Science, Honoris Causa. Mr. President, I would like to introduce Michael Lindsay, Director of the McSilver Institute for Poverty Policy and Research and Associate Professor, Silver School of Social Work, who will present the candidate for Doctor of Humane Letters. Will Trustee Gail Drugier please escort the candidate to the lectern? Barbara A. Mikulski. A 
a pioneer among women in the United States Congress. You were the first female Democrat elected to the Senate in your own right. You forged your political career from success as a social worker and community organizer in your beloved Baltimore. Known as a tough and determined advocate, you used the Senate's bully pulpit to champion civil rights and education, equal pay for equal work, and preventative and preventative health care for women. <laughs> protection of seniors and support for veterans. The first woman to chair the powerful Senate Appropriations Committee, you are a staunch supporter of federal funding for scientific research. Central to the mission of universities such as our own. NASA astronomers even named an exploding star in your honor. The supernova Mikulski. As the chamber's unofficial dean of women, you created a collegial oasis for your fellow female senators of both parties, one of your proudest accomplishments. Barbara Mikulski, trailblazer, mentor, advocate, activist, and vibrant public servant for more than half a century. You earned in 2012 the distinction of being the longest serving woman in the history of our legislative branch, as well, as well as the lasting appreciation and admiration of the American people. By virtue of the authority vested in me, I am pleased to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. Mr. President, I would like to introduce Lauren Davis, Associate Professor and Director, Business Area, Clive Davis Institute of Recorded Music, Tisch School of the Arts, who will present the candidate for Doctor of Fine Arts. Will Trustee Casey Box please escort the candidate to the lectern? Pharrell Williams. <laughs> Prolific songwriter, producer, artist, environmentalist, and composer of music that sounds like something that no one else has thought of just yet. You have made music with everyone from Kendrick Lamar, to Jay-Z, to Alicia Keys, and contributed to worldwide chart-topping hits such as Daft Punk's Get Lucky. You 
have collaborated with the world's biggest fashion, art, food, and lifestyle brand and redefine cool for this generation. Your foundation has empowered thousands of underserved youth through educational programs in new technologies, art, and media. You have made jeans from recycled plastic found in the ocean and showed us that clothing production can be sustainable. Happy, your Academy Award nominated original song struck a captivating chord with a global audience, enticing the world to sing along to your soundtrack. Pharrell Williams, as a multimedia superstar, you have made your own unique paradigm for artistic and humanitarian collaboration. Honored with 11 Grammy Awards by the music industry, you are one of those rare individuals known worldwide by only your first name. By virtue of the authority vested in me, I am pleased to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Fine Arts, Honoris Causa. Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to introduce Pharrell Williams, who will respond on behalf of the honorary degree recipients. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'd like to start by thanking President Andrew Hamilton, trustees, and the New York State and the NYU students and the faculty for welcoming me into your halls last year and letting me have an experience that I honestly could have never imagined. And I want to thank all of you for this humbling experience today. This is major. It's super heavy, and I'm very grateful. My mom is a lifelong educator, so this is going to be a really good look for me. <laughs> to be a part of a group like this is unimaginable. To speak on the behalf of our group is an honor that I'm not sure I'm qualified for. Their accomplishments. The body of work represented on this stage is staggering. We have history makers, miracle workers in their own way. If their names aren't on buildings yet, they're totally going to be. I'd like to say that I'm forever a student, and it's people like this that I'm forever grateful to learn from. They're fearless, they're boundless, multidisciplined, and multi-talented. They break down barriers and embody the focus and dedication that this planet needs, even if for Mark Kelly it means leaving from time to time. <laughs> Some may call them public servants, but their work is actually in the service of humanity and standing with them here today, and it's totally mind-blowing. In this day and age, it's easy to lose sight of the fact that it's the people who serve humanity that make the world 
really go round. Most social media and media itself would lead you to believe otherwise. But this group's work doesn't fuel gossip. Sadly, it doesn't generate a lot of clicks amongst the sea of headlines designed to bait. Their work is often too important to be boiled down to just a quick headline. Their work has never been more important. Yet as a society, we seem to celebrate less important ach achievements far more frequently. I'm glad to be a part of a moment that recognizes these people, the real movers and shakers. Think about it. These great scientists, public servants, and activists cannot be bothered with building their Instagram followers or how many views they get on YouTube. But they are the real influencers. Their work makes us healthier, safer, more enriched, and more intelligent. Their work is designed to improve the quality of life for all people not just themselves. They are not motivated by attention, but rather they're motivated by the idea of creating change for the better. I personally find that incredibly inspiring. I hope you guys do as well. NYU, the school all of you guys chose to attend is going out of its way to honor this distinguished group. What will they honor you guys for someday? What will they honor you for someday? Speaking to you guys today has charged me up. It really has. As you find your ways to serve humanity, it gives me great comfort knowing that this generation is the first that understands that we need to lift up our women. Imagine the possibilities when we remove imbalance from the ether, because it's unbalanced right now. Imagine the possibilities when women are not held back. Your generation is unraveling deeply entrenched laws, principles, and misguided values that have held women back for far too long and therefore have held us all back, the human race. The world that you will live in will be a lot better for it. This is the first generation that navigates the world with the security and the confidence to treat women as equal. You guys and gals are the first ever, I'm gonna say that again, you guys are the first ever. Our country has never seen this before. And it makes some people uncomfortable. But still, I say, just imagine the possibilities. Today is in many ways a celebration of higher education. I am forever a student, as I said before. I believe it's a trait. It's a trait that we all share. Yet we live in a time when a great education is harder and harder to come by. But like anything in life, if there is enough demand, somebody will supply it. So to the graduates, you might think your time in education is done. But after you leave here today, I'm asking you guys to let your actions out there in the world fuel the demand for better and accessible education.
engage and inspire, whether on an individual level or loudly within your communities. Talk about your accomplishments. Talk about your accomplishments. It's very important. Talk about your accomplishments. Be humble, but not too humble. Don't be invisible. Sidebar, the days of being anonymous activists or participant are over. How can we inspire if we are only behind the scenes? How will an anonymous donation ever inspire another? That was the way of the previous generations. No, no disrespect. <laughs> but don't be like them. Let your actions serve as an endorsement for education and watch the demand rise. Shining a light on a group of individuals like these on stage also helps fuel the demand. It's why all of us are standing here do what we do. That same gene, those same feelings, and adrenaline that fuels us is inside of all of you guys as well. Just like you, these recipients are brothers, sisters, sons, and daughters. We put all of our pants on one leg at a time. We all have a daily commute, but we do so with an eye towards something much bigger, serving humanity. There is no humanity without education. There is no education without demand. You are all walking endorsements for education, so please embrace that. Thank you again to the students and the faculty at NYU. Thank you to all these remarkable individuals that I'm up here standing with for your service, leadership, and inspiration. We are all forever grateful. And I know that somebody out there right now in this class just might occupy the White House one day. And let me be clear, not red and not blue, but maybe purple, like N, Y, you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Steinhardt Singers with their tribute to New York City and the class of 2017. City 
Cuomo, the president of New York University, Andrew Hamilton. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, families, and especially the NYU class of 2017. It's wonderful that so many of you could join us this morning. And to those of you who are here to cheer on our nearly 10,000 newly minted NYU graduates, welcome to Yankee Stadium on this most special day. And for those of you who strolled in here thinking you were buying tickets to the upcoming series with the Red Sox, well, welcome to you as well. So let me throw out the first pitch. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and colleagues, would you join me in congratulating our graduates for their achievements? And now, class of 2017, as a member of the faculty, I am going to give you your final assignment. You have not made it on your own. You've had the love and the support of many. I'm now going, graduates, to ask you all to rise to try to make contact, eye contact with your loved ones, turn and face them, and thank those who've helped you to this place. Okay, everyone, take your seats again. I'd like very much now to recognize our seven extraordinary honorary degree recipients. The role of a university is to provide models of scholarship, artistry, public service to our students. And this year's honorary graduates of NYU exemplify lives not just of accomplishment, but also of purpose, courage, and character. Last night, I was also pleased to present three distinguished friends of the university with special awards, and they are with us on the podium today. Rima al makarab a partner in the government of Abu Dhabi who has been instrumental in helping us establish and support NYU Abu Dhabi. Carl Weisbrod, an NYU alum who has quite literally shaped New York City for the better as a leader in city planning and economic development. And then thirdly, Tony Wel Welters, also an NYU alum who has served the university invaluably as vice chairman of the board of trustees, chairman of the board of the School of Law, and as a trustee of the NYU Langone Medical Center. We thank them and congratulate them all. What a wonderful day it is today. The sky is blue and the sun is truly shining on NYU. As I stand on second base in Yankee Stadium and look out on the brilliant sea of violet in front of me, and I catch the scent of hot dogs and popcorn, and I think of all of your accomplishments and of your loved one's pride. I think I can say without fear of contradiction that nothing can beat this. But I think I can also say, also without fear of contradiction, that it has been an eventful year. Our unity is being tested. Free speech is being challenged. 
discourse has grown less civil. People feel fearful for their friends or for themselves. Regard for facts has ceded ground to the comfort of listening to only to those who agree with us. We find ourselves at a time when momentous events are occurring around us, and we wonder, perhaps especially all of you, who, to, who today are on the cusp of adulthood and careers, we wonder what our place is in all of this. We may feel tempted to climb under the bed covers and binge read our favorite chemistry journals. Or, or is that just me? But when there is so much uncertainty, when the way forward seems obscure and even daunting, these are times that demand that we concentrate on what truly matters, what we stand for. In higher education, we stand for facts. We stand for data and evidence, for rigorous intellectual inquiry, and for the testing of ideas. We stand for science and research as doors to discovery. We stand for the humanities and the arts, knowing their unique ability to illuminate the human experience. We stand for free speech and open debate and the unbridled pursuit of truth. We stand for diversity and the importance of listening to perspectives different from our own. We stand for opportunity and for the right of each of us, each of us to fulfill our potential no matter what our background. We stand for a global outlook, firm in the belief that engagement, whether it be in our research, in our teaching, or in our international campuses, that engagement contributes to peace, to progress, and to understanding, and that our presence brings more freedom of ideas, not less. We stand, just as Pharrell has said, we stand for the value of higher education as a powerful and much needed force for good in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, these are values that have sustained NYU for 186 years through civil war, two world wars, and much economic upheaval. And these are the values that will see us through these uncertain times and on to the next 186 years. But what we stand for won't mean much if we don't have the personal quality of resolve, of persistence and grit, and resiliency. Every day I have witnessed the NYU community turn these values into action and make a difference. Whether it was getting soaked in a downpour in Washington to march in support of science, or whether it was, whether it was volunteering at the School of Medicine's student-run free clinic for uninsured patients, or, or whether it was founding a non-profit to provide financial aid advising to New York City high schoolers. None of these were easy. The valuable things, the worthwhile things, the noble things, they never are easy. We have on this stage today an honoree who embodies perseverance in an extraordinary way. Six years ago, Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords was the victim of a horrifying attack that many in her place may not have recovered from, 
physically or emotionally. And today, thanks to a reservoir of courage and grit that I can scarcely imagine, she stands before us, honouring us with her presence as much as we honour her with a degree. And we all know she is now working with her husband to prevent others from needlessly experiencing what they did. And I can think of few examples of perseverance as inspiring as theirs. Now, as NYU students, in far smaller ways, you have been challenged yourselves. You have met rigorous academic demands. You have founded startups, spent hours in the lab, interned in City Hall. You have created community amidst a large, diverse student body. You have studied abroad in new and unfamiliar places and you have become seasoned and perhaps even slightly hardened New Yorkers. And this was intentional, so that when you are all called upon to confront challenges in the future, be they personal, political or humanitarian, you will find the grit needed to carry on to create solutions and to move towards hope and progress. To the parents and loved ones here today, thank you for trusting us with your sons and daughters' education. They are stars. They have shined for us as they have shined for you. And we are all basking in their glow. To everyone in the class of 2017, know that we are immensely proud of your talent and proud of your spirit. We are also proud of your loyalty, your generosity and your commitment, which has shown itself in the record-breaking contributions that you've all made to the 1831 Fund. More than 49%, the largest number ever, of the senior class gave nearly $50,000 for scholarship. Well done to all of you. That's the way to play it forward. To all our graduates, come back and see us often. We've tried to teach you how to excel and persist. We will want to hear about your triumphs, to be sure, but we will also want to hear about your setbacks. In this life ahead, remember what you stand for, and you will all be fine. From everyone at NYU, Class of 2017, congratulations to you all. Thank you. Please welcome Roxanne A. Roman, who receives a Bachelor of Arts today from NYU Shanghai, and will now address her fellow graduates, the Class of 2017. President Hamilton, trustees, distinguished guests, NYU faculty, family, friends, and my fellow graduates, welcome. Assalamu alaikum. Ni hao. Last night, the Empire State Building shone violet. Next week, Abu Dhabi's Sadiat Island will glow NYU purple, followed by, for the first time, Shanghai's Pearl Tower.
three of the world's greatest cities will light beacons to tell the world the class of 2017 has made it. Congratulations. We have been nurtured by a world-class faculty, a proudly diverse student body, and a university of global presence in cities of geopolitical, economic, and cultural significance, not to mention fantastic food. Although neither easy nor without sacrifice, our journeys have been unbelievably enriched by unmatched experiences and opportunities. My own NYU story spans building a community from the ground up with the inaugural class of NYU Shanghai. Hunting for the best chicken over rice between Palladium and Brooklyn Heights, still finding sand in my shoes from desert sunsets studying away in Abu Dhabi, interning for former First Lady Michelle Obama while a global leadership scholar in Washington, D.C., and now standing before a sea of violet at Yankee Stadium. Whether here in New York or in Shanghai or in Abu Dhabi, we, the class of 2017, are part of a visionary pursuit for a global education, one that imposes on us a unique responsibility to the world. We are inheriting a challenging future where ignorance, bigotry, distrust, unjust systems, and war threaten to overwhelm our hope for progress. At NYU, we have expanded our perspectives and identities by engaging new environments and people. As a consequence, world events affect our peers, affect our friends, and so affect us. From the attacks in Paris to protests in South Korea, Venezuela's crisis, Syria's suffering, and women's marches from all over the world, I vicariously experienced triumph and tragedy through the eyes of friends and classmates who call these places home. Because of NYU, the world is no longer a stranger we can be indifferent or pessimistic towards. Our honorary degree recipients teach us that a lifetime of service begins with the decision to match your professional passions with fulfilling humanity's needs. So whether by your bright computer screens, sweltering stage lights, sunlit office suites, or glowing classroom projectors, use the NYU torch to ignite your light. Find ways to educate and inform, to lead inclusively and ethically, to be generous and kind, and to empower others to follow in your example. President Barack Obama told my White House internship class that he wished to inoculate us against cynicism, pessimism, and any doubt about our power to create tangible change. I pass this wish to you. Like many of you, I still can't get tickets to Hamilton. But when I do see the show, I'll remember I told Yankee Stadium this. Look around, look around at how lucky we are to be alive right now. History is happening, and we just happen to be in the greatest city in the world. Approach these turbulent times as an opportunity to explore the full potential of your talent, courage, and empathy, and as a chance to be purposeful in your path. Congratulations, class of 2017. 
Look up to violet skyscrapers around the world and know that the future is lit. Ladies and gentlemen, the deans of each school will now present their class representatives for all degrees and certificates in course to President Hamilton. Candidates should stand when their dean's name is called. The official conferring of all degrees and certificates in course by President Hamilton will take place following the final presentation. As a sign of respect for your fellow graduates, all candidates and their guests are requested to remain in their seats until all candidates have been recognized. G. Gabrielle Starr, Dean of the College of Arts and Science. Good afternoon. Mr. President, I have the distinct honor on behalf of the faculty of the College of Arts and Science to present to you 2,102 candidates for the bachelor's degree. They have earned the right to be here by their intelligence, determination, and merit. On behalf of those students, today I present to you as well Yasmin Nelson, who will receive the degree as sign of their merit. Trevor W. Morrison, Dean of the School of Law. Mr. President, 1,080 graduate candidates from the School of Law will receive their degrees here today. And on behalf of the faculty, let me say how deeply proud we are of all of them. I have the honor to present Mr. Russell F. Rennie, who will receive his diploma on behalf of the 497 candidates for the degree of Juris Doctor, 10 candidates for the Doctor of Juridical Science degree, 549 candidates for the Master of Law degree, 11 candidates for the Master of Studies in Law, and 13 candidates for the Advanced Professional Certificate in Law and Business. Robert I. Grossman, Dean of the School of Medicine. Mr. President, 179 graduate candidates from NYU School of Medicine, which is celebrating its 176th year, will receive their degrees today. Mr. President, I have the honor of presenting Alejandro Torres, who will receive his diploma on behalf of 166 candidates for doctoral degree and 13 candidates for a Master of Science degree. Katapali R. Srinivasan, Dean of the Tandon School of Engineering. 
Mr. President, I present to you 1,904 of my kids from the Tandon School of Engineering who will receive their degrees here today. Mark my words, sir, they are noisy today, but they will lead the world tomorrow. I have the honor of presenting Peter Finch, who will receive his diploma on behalf of the 496 candidates for the bachelor's degree. I have the honor of presenting Tao Bian, who will receive his diploma on behalf of 1,357 candidates for the master's degree and 51 candidates for the doctoral degree. Michael P. O'Connor, Executive Vice Dean for Finance and Administration for the College of Dentistry. Mr. President, 454 candidates total from the College of Dentistry will receive their degrees today. I have the honor of presenting Liza Gross, who will receive her, her diploma on behalf of the 63 candidates for the associate's degree and 13 candidates for the bachelor's degree. I also have the honor of presenting Christina Chung, who will receive her diploma on behalf of the 11 candidates for the master's degree and 367 candidates for their doctoral degree. Anna Harvey, Interim Dean of the Graduate School of Arts and Science. Mr. President, on behalf of the Graduate School of Arts and Science, I am honored to present to you 1,643 rigorous and creative scholars in the humanities, social sciences, and the sciences. Mr. President, I have the honor to ask Emily West, doctoral candidate in politics, to accept her diploma on behalf of 24 candidates for advanced certificates, 1,297 candidates for the master's degree, and 322 candidates for the doctoral degree. Dominic Brewer, Dean of the Steinhardt School of Culture, Education, and Human Development. Mr. President, 2,143 students from the Steinhardt School of Culture, Education, and Human Development will receive their degrees today. Mr. President, I have the honor to present Effie Karamaditri, who will receive her diploma on behalf of 780 candidates for the bachelor's degree.
Mr. President, I have the honor to present Alec Betterly, who will receive his diploma on behalf of 1,270 candidates for the Advanced Certificate and Master's degree and 93 candidates for the doctoral degree. Gita Menon, Dean of the Leonard and Stern School of Business, Undergraduate College. President Hamilton, 664 undergraduate candidates from the Leonard and Stern School of Business will receive their degrees here today. Among them are 637 students majoring in business and 26 students majoring in business and political economy. In addition, we are also excited to have our first student graduating with a joint degree of Bachelor of Science in Business from NYU Stern and Bachelor of Fine Arts in Film and Television from NYU Tisch. I have the honor of presenting Senior Class President Meghna Bansal who will receive her diploma on behalf of all 664 candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree. Peter Blair Henry, Dean of the Leonard and Stern School of Business. Mr. President, on behalf of the Leonard N. Stern School of Business, I have the honor to present graduates and degree candidates numbering in all 1,067 for the degree of Master of Business Administration, 241 for the degree of Master of Science, 10 for the degree of Master of Philosophy, and 16 for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Mr. President, I am pleased to present Eric Kaplan, who will receive his diploma on behalf of all of the candidates. Eileen Sullivan Marks, Dean of the Rory Myers College of Nursing. Mr. President, 642 candidates totally from the Rory Myers College of Nursing will receive their degrees here today. I have the honor of presenting Colby Elizabeth Chilson who will receive her diploma on behalf of the very excited 429 candidates for the bachelor's degree. <laughs> Mr. President, I have the honor of presenting Melanie Ann Applegate, who will receive her diploma on behalf of 194 candidates for the master's degree and 19 candidates for the doctoral degree. Dennis DiLorenzo, Dean of the School of Professional Studies. Mr. President, 1,611 candidates from the School of Professional Studies will be awarded their associates, bachelor's, and master's degrees, as well as advanced certificates today. They came together with diverse backgrounds, 
with a wealth of experience to participate in rigorous academic curricula mixed with real world experience and practical application. From real estate development to peace studies, they will be the leaders in the chosen fields of practice and their influence will radiate across the globe and will represent NYU magnificently. Mr. President, for our undergraduates, I have the pleasure of presenting Madeline Claire Bass from our Tisch Institute for Sports Management, Media, and Business, who will receive her diploma on behalf of 13 candidates for the associate's degree and 366 candidates for the bachelor's degree. Mr. President, I have the pleasure of presenting Marie S. Marino from our Master of Science in Public Relations and Corporate Communication, who will receive her diploma on behalf of 35 candidates for advanced certificates and 1,197 candidates earning their master's degrees. Jerry A. Gleed, Dean of the Robert F. Wagner Graduate School of Public Service. Mr. President, 377 passionate graduate candidates from the Robert F. Wagner Graduate School of Public Service will receive their degrees here today. On behalf of our faculty, I have the honor of presenting Christian Adams, who will receive his diploma on behalf of 278 candidates for the master's degree in public administration, 36 candidates for the master's degree in urban planning, 54 candidates for the executive master's degree in public administration, and nine candidates for the doctoral degree in public administration. James Jacquard, Interim Dean of the Silver School of Social Work. Mr. President, 632 candidates total will receive their degrees today from the Silver School of Social Work, the school that proudly addresses social justice and that serves the most underserved populations in the world. I have the honor of presenting Alyssa Hernan, who will receive her diploma on behalf of 41 candidates for the bachelor's degree. I also have the honor of presenting Alvin Brigadet who will receive diploma on behalf of 576 candidates for the master's degree and 15 candidates for the doctoral degree. Allison Green, Dean of the Tisch School of the Arts. Mr. President, I am thrilled to present 1,399 fantastic candidates from the Tisch School of the Arts who will change our future. I have the honor of presenting Anella Farrell Holton Kane, who will receive her diploma on behalf of 30 candidates for the bachelor's degree 
and 933 candidates for the Bachelor's of Fine Arts degree. And I have the honor to present Ali Kashfi, who will receive his diploma on behalf of 94 candidates for the master's degree, 216 candidates for the master of fine arts degree, 106 candidates for the master's of professional studies degree, and 20 candidates for the doctoral degree. Patrick McCreary, Associate Dean of Students at the Gallatin School of Individualized Study. Mr. President, 517 candidates from the Gallatin School of Individualized Study will receive their degrees here today. These students have stepped outside commonly defined fields of study when they chose to undertake an individualized course of study. They are border crosses and bond boundary questioners. They continue to inspire us all. Mr. President, I have the honor to present Michael J. Abraham, who will receive his diploma on behalf of 450 key candidates for the bachelor's degree. I have the honor to present Gabriel Smith, who will receive his diploma on behalf of 667 candidates for the master's degree. Fred Schwarzbach, Dean of Liberal Studies. President Hamilton, 78 undergraduate candidates from liberal studies will receive their degrees here today. Students who exemplify the pioneering spirit and the extraordinary achievement of the Global Network University. Mr. President, I present Moira Reinbrecht, who will receive her diploma on behalf of the candidates for the bachelor's degree in Global Liberal Studies. Fabio Piano, Provost of NYU Abu Dhabi. Mr. President, 153 undergraduate candidates, our fourth graduating class from NYU Abu Dhabi, will receive their degrees in Abu Dhabi on May 24th. Mr. President, I have the honor to present Fatima Mann, who will receive her diploma on behalf of these candidates for the bachelor's degree. Jeffrey S. Lehman, Vice Chancellor of NYU Shanghai. Mr. President, the first 264 pioneering candidates for bachelor's degrees from NYU's newest degree-granting campus 
NYU Shanghai will receive their degrees today. I have the honor of presenting John Jung, who will receive his diploma on behalf of all the candidates. Cheryl G. Healton, Dean of the College of Global Public Health. Mr. President, I am thrilled to present 143 extraordinary graduate candidates from the second graduating class of the groundbreaking College of Global Public Health receiving their degrees here today. Mr. President, I also have the distinct honor to present Oname Ika, who will receive her diploma on behalf of her 143 classmates and public health pioneers in the Masters of Arts in Bioethics and the Master of Public Health degree programs. Thank you. Stephen E. Coonan, Director of the Center for Urban Science and Progress. Mr. President, we're just about at the end. Eighty-five graduate candidates in the fourth cohort from the Center for Urban Science and Progress will receive their degrees this summer, well-schooled in the scientific understanding and improvement of the world's cities. I have the honor of presenting Hong Ting Chen, who will represent candidates for the Master of Applied Urban Science and Informatics. Ladies and gentlemen, Provost Catherine E. Fleming. We now proceed to the formal conferral of degrees. In keeping with the tradition of New York University, we highlight this most important moment in our ceremony by the passing of the university torch, the symbol of learning from a senior member of our academic community to the most junior. On stage now, holding the university torch, is John Canemaker, professor, Department of Film and Television, Tisch School of the Arts. As President Hamilton confers the degrees, the torch will be passed to the youngest baccalaureate member of the graduating class, Kyle Hunt, 19 years old, of the College of Arts and Science. I ask all of the candidates for degrees and certificates to rise for the conferring of degrees in course by President Hamilton. Members of the class of 2017, through your successful efforts, as certified by the recommendations of your deans, you have met the requirements of your respective schools and thus deserve to receive this hallmark of New York University. By the authority vested in me, by the trustees of New York University, I admit you to the degrees and certificates for which you have been recommended. It's now official, everyone. You are university graduates.
You have now joined the ranks of NYU alumni. You are part of a legacy of NYU violets who since 1831 have shared their knowledge and used their talents to benefit humanity. I know you will continue this tradition, embodying the words of our motto, per stare et praestare, persevere and excel. Congratulations to you all. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the 185th commencement exercises. The platform party will now recess. Congratulations, class of 2017. Thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful afternoon.